two of the Doc Stewart Show, baby. Let's go. It's hour number two. Welcome to the Doug Stewart Show, the realest, truest sports and guide talk show in America. Yeah. Tribute Tuesday. Paying homage to the great new edition. Thank you for joining me, Stewies. Good morning to you. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Good night, wherever you may be. Uh, when you're listening to this show, a lot of people listen to the show uh, after the fact, uh, we do it live Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time uh, right here on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. So if you're over there in Budapest, uh, Israel, Ghana, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Doug Stewart Show. Yes, sir. Let me jump into this chat. We still got to talk about Georgia and what Kirby Smart is doing. He's doing some smart things. And we're going to talk about Debo and the NFL. <laughs> and Vegas love. And Vegas love on the Doug Stewart Show a little bit later. But let me jump into this chat on Spreaker.com. From Ducking and Dodging, he says, Grego, Ninja throws the cape on for Pac-Man 2. Um, from Big L, people have a short memory. Alabama is in trouble. Clemson going to whoop that ass. Now, I'm not going to say Clemson's going to whoop that ass, but I think Clemson could win more today than I think they could even win yesterday. Yesterday, I thought they could win. I already picked them. I picked them at the beginning of the year. I picked Clemson and Alabama to repeat in the national championship game. If you're just joining us, you didn't hear the show yesterday. Um, for, for a couple of reasons, the experience, Deshaun, fact, Deshaun uh, Watson, and you got a rookie quarterback on Alabama who this past week kind of looked like a rookie. He threw 57, for, for, for 57 yards. Get it out, Dougie. He threw for 57 yards. And now on top of that, you don't have the coordinator that's been with this guy the entire year, you know. And I know Alabama is, you know, is great. They got fantastic players. And Nick Saban is smart as hell. This is probably the reason why he brought in Steve Sarkeesian for this type of thing uh, happening. Uh, and so – you know, they're prepared for it. They're prepared for it. We're just going to see. Let me grab a call. Caller, thanks for calling the Doug Stewart Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What you want to talk about? Hey, this is Big Apple Passage. Please tell me why uh, all those buses in 2016, I went the bus of the year. You got Donald Trump. You got uh, Jason <laughs> Whitlock. You got all these other clowns. And tell me something. How you want to tell me to pay time when he ain't messing around with no color folks no way? All he did was socialize with a bunch of those color folks who ain't never seen color purple. And I'm gone. Hey, uh, Big Apple Bastard. <laughs> Big Apple Bastard, the people spoke. Your ass was nominated Buster of the Year. And what, what that says about you, Big Apple Bastard, that's an indictment on you that you lost Buster of the Year to Donald Trump. So I don't know what you're insinuating, sir, that I had something to do with the poll. The poll was fair and square. If you're new to the Doug Stewart show, you just heard from a quick little call, a little radical, crazy, insane person type call from a guy named Big Apple Bastard. And so every week on Friday, we give out the Buster of the Week Award. Uh, we call it the Boy Penis Award. It's a long story of how we got the name. And so at the end of the year, we, we cumulatively put together a list of all the Buster of the Weeks from the past year, or the best ones. And Big Apple Bastard, the lunatic guy that you just heard, <laughs> beat out Donald Trump, beat out Jason Whitlock, beat out Stacey Dash, beat out a racist juror in Charleston, South Carolina. All I'm saying is it ain't got nothing to do with me. It's an indictment on you. It's a you problem, sir. <laughs> From Chef Ivan, Roll Tide. What up, everybody? Sorry I can't respond much. I'm whipping this five-gallon of gumbo, but I stopped to respond to doing Bama prognostication. Laugh out loud. From Big L, my man, Chef Ivan Roll Tide. I think he's a chef down there in New Orleans. Uh, Happy New Year to you. 
Good damn thing. Um, let's see. Big L, RC, we will soon see Alabama offense is not complicated, but I would hate a new offensive coordinator. Here's the thing about it, man. Here's the thing about it. Uh, it's been well known that teams that run that spread offense, that have an athletic slash dual threat slash new jack quarterback, uh, historically have given Alabama and Nick Saban problems. And, I mean, so you got that playing, uh, 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 you know, as a factor in this game. And, 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 and somebody said it earlier. When I started reading chat and you're listening to the Doug Stewart show, y'all got a short memory, man. I mean, y'all make it sound like that that Alabama, you know, is just going to roll over Clemson. How can you think something like that when you just watch Clemson just destroy, you know, and render, you know, offensive lists <laughs> you know, Ohio State this past uh, weekend? And not only that, how can you say that when Clemson, in effect, had Alabama's ass beat last year? If it weren't for a Nick Saban uncharacteristic onside kick, Clemson would have probably won that game. Yeah, yeah, Clemson would have probably won. I mean, everybody's forgetting this happened last year, okay? I watched it at the J.R. Crickets around from my house. I was the only Clemson fan in there. It seems like there was a big contingent of Alabama fans, and I was the only ninja in there screaming for Clemson to win. Clemson was going to win that game, okay? And you know Nick Saban is very, very conservative. Like, Nick Saban's one of the last coaches to, to say, all right, we got to scrap, you know, uh, three, uh, four yards in a cloud of dust. We got to pass the ball more. We got to do the spread offense. Like, Nick Saban's an old-school football coach, very conservative. And for Nick Saban to kick an onside kick like that and risk giving Clemson the ball at the 50-yard line, the middle of the field, says that they were desperate. So their asses was beat. So y'all need to stop acting like. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying Clemson is going to win definitely. I haven't even made that prognostication. I think I said yesterday, I want Clemson to win. I think they can win. But I'm not going to make this pick, you know, and ruin my prognostication numbers for 2017 already. No, well, actually, I guess I did. I guess I did. I did pick Clemson to win. Uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, but Alabama could win. I'm not a fool. Alabama's got the top-notch players in the country, you know, consistently every year. I get that. But it's just crazy to me. And they may lose. They may get blown out. But you can't say that Clemson's going to get blown out before they play the game based on the evidence that we have, based on the variables that we have in the equation. You can't say Clemson's going to get beat by – so, I think it was 334 Bama boy in the chat room said Clemson's going to lose by 21. Niggas, you crazy? And I, I apologize for that, that, that French just now. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. But it just bothers me. Like, how could you, you know, realistically throw out Clemson's going to lose this national championship game by 21 points? Like, there's nothing that says that's going to happen. There's nothing. It may happen. But there's no evidence, there's no empirical evidence to say that that's going to happen. As a matter of fact, you can make a very good argument, and I've been doing that Clips is going to win this game. Hold that tiger! Hold that tiger! Hold that tiger! I need to download that. We need to download that waterhead. I'm getting a thumbs up. We need to download Clemson's fight song. Hold that tiger. Hold that tiger. <laughs> Sound like some Beverly Hillbillies music. From 334 Bama Boy, I never said no BS like that. Okay, I'm sorry. If you didn't say it, sir, I apologize. But look back in the chat. Somebody said Clemson by or Alabama by 21. You know, and I scroll past it in the chat room. Yeah. I'm not even saying, once again, I'm not, I'm not saying that, that, that Clemson's, you know, that Alabama can't win. I think Clemson is going to win. That's my pick. I think Clemson's going to win. Um, if they were to lose, it wouldn't be a shock. Alabama has the best players in the country. Not by a lot, though. It's, it's not like previous years where Alabama clearly had better players. If you watch that Ohio State game the other night, 
if you're in Big Ten country or you're on the West Coast or whatever and you don't see a lot of Clemson football, you saw that team the other night. They got grown-ass men on that defense, on that defensive line, okay? So they're going to get after that kid, Jalen Hurts. They're going to bring the house. Uh, Venables, the, dif- the defensive coordinator for Clemson, man, called a great game. And if they shut out Ohio State, the Vaughn in Ohio State, which everybody and their mama thought was this great team, they didn't score a point. They're going to get after this freshman kid. This boy is 18 years old. They're going to get after his ass. And I like Jalen Hurts, man, but not this weekend. Not this weekend. He go down. He go, he go down, boy. He go down. Yes, sir. Yeah, God damn, the more I think about it, I like Clemson to win this damn game going away. Hold that tiger. Entertainment up next. Doug Stewart Show. Y'all crazy, man.